Good evening. This is To The Point. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alex Bell. A teen convicted of killing a young rising football star is now a free man. In 2015, J.J. Clavo was shot and killed in front of his teammates. They went to a nearby restaurant before a game and on the way back, just blocks away from Grant High School, Kamonte Lindsay walked up and opened fire, hitting J.J. in the neck killing him. Lindsay was 15 when he shot and killed JJ Clavo. Because of a new law at this time of his sentencing, he couldn't be charged as an adult. Therefore, he was sentenced to up to four years in jail. And the law known as Senate Bill 1391, without it, Lindsay would have been sentenced to 87 years to life in prison. So I want to go ahead and bring in our Jeannie Nguyen now because you have been looking at this bill all day, right? Alex, I've been reaching out to defense attorneys, district attorneys, and families just to get a well-rounded look at this law. Now, this law comes into play when a minor younger than 16 commits a crime. And given everything that's happened this week, people have differing perspectives on this law. If you are under 16 at the time of a serious crime like this, murder, under 16, the longest they can hold you is till your 25th birthday. As a criminal defense attorney, Mark Reichel has defended a lot of people accused of serious crimes. Isaiah Fowler is one of them. He was 12 years old at the time he was convicted for stabbing his sister to death in Calaveras County. He was brought in, tried in the juvenile system and convicted. But the longest they could hold him was to age 25. Like Fowler's case and Camonte Lindsay's, the both of them avoided being tried as adults because of Senate Bill 1391. The bill was passed in 2015 and protects minors accused of major crimes. Reichel says this law benefits these minors. It's sad on one side because you have juveniles that have committed violent crimes, but in all fairness to them, their brain really hasn't developed enough to understand this. But for the families that have lost a loved one due to these crimes, Faith Whitmore sympathizes with their pain. She's the CEO for the Family Justice Center, helping support families that are victims of crimes. But to know that the one responsible is ours, I think it must be horrifically hard for the family and for the community who love that young man. While she agrees brains may not be fully developed at a young age, Whitmore says it is a concern to know a convicted murderer is no longer behind bars. It doesn't seem right that it's all or nothing just because of an age factor. Jeannie, are there any, you know, proposed changes to this law? Is anybody pushing back on it? You know, it's still a little too early to tell because this law was passed in 2015. So a lot of the minors convicted under this law are either just getting released now or in a few years. All right, Danny, thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right, so a fentanyl crisis continues to take lives. And tonight, another suspected dealer in our area is in jail on suspicion of murder. And the investigation into 27-year-old Courtney Robinson began on July 5th when police responded to a report of a dead man in Yuba City. That man was later identified as 32-year-old Jesus Chavez, who had taken a lethal dose of fentanyl. And police say undercover agents contacted Robinson, who agreed to sell them fentanyl. She was booked on suspicion of murder and fentanyl sales. Eight men are under arrest after an undercover operation to prevent child sex crimes. The Roseville Police Department led the two-day operation, and they say that the men are facing suspicion of attempting lewd and lascivious acts with a minor under the age of 14, arranging to meet with a minor for a lewd purpose and arriving at the meet location. A new Alzheimer's treatment, Lakembi, could drive up the prices of Medicare, and that's according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. They say annual spending on the drug may make it the third most costly covered by Medicare Part B. Medicare Part B premiums are expected to cover approximately a quarter of the program's costs. And what is Medicare Part B, if you're wondering? Well, it does generally cover medical services provided outside of hospitals. The last estimate from the government predicted the people in the highest Medicare Part B income bracket could pay up to $174 a month. A mysterious company has purchased nearly $1 billion of land surrounding Travis Air Force Base. It is one of the most critical military bases in the Western U.S. Democratic Congressman John Garamendi says a federal investigation has been underway for eight months. Investigators are still struggling to get answers, though, and the congressman says that he has raised the alarm to the U.S. Air Force. I have every reason in the world to believe that this land is in an area in which spy operations 
or any other nefarious activity could take place that could detrimentally impact the ability of Travis Air Force Base to operate in a moment of national emergency. Public records show the company Flannery Associates LLC began purchasing the land back in 2018. And investigators say those acquisitions ramped up this year. The congressman says attorneys with the company say they are looking to diversify their portfolio, but the congressman is skeptical. And tonight, Sacramento pet owners are up in arms. Curtis Park neighbors just voted on concept plans for proposed dog parks that could replace the one at Sierra 2 Green. But some pet owners, they just wish it would go back to the way it was. Our Luke Cleary explains tonight. The Sierra 2 Green. It was supposed to be a place to bring people and their dogs together. When you're older and you're disabled and you're low income, you don't have a lot of options for community. People like Angela Lopes and her dog, Lula. She's smarter than me, she's prettier than me, and she's more patient than me. But now they find themselves in the middle of a months long fight over the future of the off leash dog park. Some people worry it's too crowded and the dogs roam free too close to where children play. Now the debate has moved to a new phase, the city holding this vote on eight different concept plans. It was frustrating for me because I didn't really see any of the options I wanted on there. Are you disappointed by how divisive this has turned out? Very much so, very much so. We have people in the neighborhood who say, I don't even care what happens, I just want everybody to stop fighting. Kirsten Smith says mixed use is the answer. We believe it can work, it worked for decades. We think it can work again. Let the dogs off leash for certain hours of the day. My ideal would be to go back to the way it was with adhering to hours and have them posted on the fence. Time will tell, but for now, the park remains a bone of contention in this neighborhood. All right, and we'll keep you updated on what's next for Sierra 2 Green. The city of Sacramento says that they will use information from the concept plan vote and comment cards to decide the next steps for the dog park. All right, still ahead on To The Point. A heat dome sitting over the western U.S. How hot temperatures are expected again over California. And should you keep your A.C. on during the heat? What the power grid operators are saying for this weekend. And then coming up later in the show, with West Nile virus cases hitting records, we speak to a woman who almost lost her life. And by the time I got to the top of my head, it felt like two cast iron skillets just hitting me and I would leave out a scream and I'd pass out. Signs and symptoms that you need to know coming up at around 645. All right, Carly, coming with the good news forecast. It's going to be hot. Hi, Carly. Hi. <laughs> yeah, hot forecast. The heat advisory in effect starting tomorrow. That means we're looking at triple digits once again. Another weekend of them. And I know a lot of people are saying, give me a break, right? It's triple digits and we're at home and we want to enjoy no time with that air conditioning blasting all day. And racing those utility uh, bills there, but you can find things to do. We looked at triple digit heat today. We'll see those temperatures rising near 105 and 106 on average for the Sacramento area, but that means areas further north could see temperatures as high as even 110 degrees. We got the mid to upper 90s in the foothills today with 88 in Truckee, 85 in South Lake Tahoe in the Big Mountain backyard. We are looking at our temperatures right now at 98 in Sacramento, 100 still in Stockton, warm there, 97 in Modesto with Marysville. At 100 degrees, the high pressure system sitting over the western U.S. Huge heat dome here as you see it pushing in the Pacific Northwest and areas for us. We're seeing a lot of heat advisories in place. Heat advisory for us, an excessive heat warning to the south. Now, what that means for us is, yeah, it'll still be hot, not quite as hot as further south, but we're still looking at temperatures ranging anywhere from 99 to 111 degrees. It even extends all the way up below 6,000 feet, so the foothill spot's getting a lot of that heat. And all the way through the coastal range, we will see overnight lows hotter in the foothills near the 70-degree mark and mid to upper 60s overnight in the valley. Now, the heat risk will be major for your Friday for a lot of areas surrounding the valley as we look into those foothills and further north toward Red Bluff and Redding, Chico, Yuba City, looking at major heat risks. This level affects anyone uh, without effective cooling or adequate hydration. Again, make sure you're hydrated. Sprinkling in here extreme heat risk for areas around Arnold and some foothill spots, and that means, you know, everyone overnight isn't really getting much relief. So just keep that in mind as we are looking at that heat. Foothills in those 100 degree marks, even as high as 108 in Ione, and the 10 day forecast doesn't drop our temperatures to those 90s until at least about Monday. 
All right, thank you, Carly. The California ISO is closely monitoring the next round of heat. Today, they provided this update saying that they aren't concerned for our weekend ahead. Grid conditions are stable. No energy supply shortages are anticipated. So go ahead and run that AC. And you can check the hourly forecast for wherever you are to better plan your day when you download the free ABC 10 app from your favorite app store. We've also got a list of cooling centers. So remember to turn on those notifications. Prepare for delays on I-80 this weekend. After the break, we'll show you the exact spots Caltrans plans to shut down. And West Nile virus cases are increasing. After the break, how a mosquito bite almost cost a woman her life. A heads up here, Caltrans plans to close part of Interstate 80. This will affect drivers coming from San Francisco. Starting on Friday night, Caltrans will close all eastbound lanes between Highway 4 and Cummings Skyway in Contra Costa County. This is for scheduled maintenance and repairs. Detours will be in effect through Monday. Cases of West Nile virus are at record highs in Placer County. The mosquito and vector control says that 66 mosquito samples and 10 dead birds tested positive for the virus. They were found in rural West Placer County, West Roseville, Lincoln and Newcastle. Those areas are being treated. This week, uh, since we have had so many uh, occurrences of, mis of uh, positive mosquitoes throughout the county, uh, we're doing quite a bit of uh, aerial and ground based uh, adult mosquito control. Uh, and that's really just to focus on those areas where there's the highest risk to human uh, health. A lot of that rain we had just followed by warm temperatures is just creating an environment for the virus to spread. This really is no joke. There's a reason people are encouraged to fight the bite. Tonight, John Bartell introduces us to a woman that contracted West Nile virus and nearly died. And years later, she's still suffering. Take a look. Just one bite. And I remember being in my garden, seeing all these mosquitoes. One bite is all it took to change Marie Hillman's life forever. I'm not older. I was a healthy 40-year-old woman that was very, very active with a lot of energy. And um, it's taken, it's changed my life. In the summer of 2006, Marie Hellman was working in her yard in winters when a mosquito infected with West Nile virus bit her. A lot of fatigue. And then by that evening, vertigo, uh, nausea, extreme nausea to the point I was like crawling to the bathroom. It would take doctors several visits and missed diagnoses before discovering that the virus was inside Marie. And by the time I got to the top of my head, it felt like two cast iron skillets just hitting me and I would leave out a scream and I would pass out. There is no cure for West Nile virus. Doctors can only help manage the pain. So all Marie's family could do was watch as the symptoms got worse. I guess I was in a coma, I was told, and my husband had signed my DNR and my organs started shutting down. Thought to be on her deathbed, Marie miraculously woke up from her coma 15 days later. She was alive, but the symptoms of the virus would follow her forever. Vision loss, light sensitivity, optical nerve damage in both of my eyes, dizziness. I still, and now I have seizures. Um, didn't know I was having seizures. I've had two strokes. I'm on meds for the rest of my life. West Nile virus is in the Sacramento Valley now, and because of our wet spring, the Sacramento Yolo County Mosquito and Vector Control District is urging people to prepare. West Nile virus is our top priority because that's the one that obviously, you know, the one that we that we know is here and we know that it affects people, you know, year after year. Luz Maria Robles says West Nile virus is now considered an endemic and since 2003, there's been more than 7,600 Californians that have been seriously infected and more than 300 of them have died from the virus. This is a collaborative effort. We can't do this alone. We really ask for people to do their part. West Nile virus generally starts in birds, and if mosquitoes bite an infected bird, they can transmit it to humans. Dead birds can also be a good indicator of where West Nile virus is. So vector control laboratories are asking the public to report dead bird sightings so they can come out and test for the virus. So right here we have a lot of standing water. Prevention is the first step to fighting the bite. District Inspector David Smith was sent to this home in Natomas to look for eggs and larvae. He says mosquitoes lay eggs in standing water and they only need about a bottle cap full to survive. It only takes about three days for those eggs to hatch off once the mosquitoes have laid their eggs and a total of a week, seven to 10 days for them to go through that full mosquito life cycle. 
Inspections are a free service provided by the Vector Control District. David works with homeowners to point out problematic areas, like the water that accumulates in trash cans or flower pots after watering. If mosquitoes are airborne, he'll either spray or set mosquito traps. Please give us a call. We're here to help. We're here to serve you. We offer free home service inspections, free repellent wipes for your outdoor evening. Prevention is only part of fighting the bite. Protection is also important. The CDC recommends covering up anytime you go outside with long clothing or using mosquito repellent that contains DEET. You know, I'm more scared for the younger people too because everyone seems to think that it's an older person's infection and this is what happens and that's not true at all. Um, anybody can get West Nile virus. I mean, we don't think about our kids being out doing sports outside, okay? They sweat. Mosquitoes are attracted to sweat. Reporting on the transmission of West Nile virus, I'm John Bartell. If you find a dead bird, especially a crow, a jay, magpie, or a finch, please file a dead bird report or call this toll-free number. The number is on your screen. It's 877-968-2473. That's 877-WNV-BIRD. We have triple-digit heat again, and for people in Arizona, they just set another record. They've had temperatures above 110 degrees for the past 20 days and counting. 18 people have died. Heat is the deadliest weather event, and meteorologist Brendan Minchev shows us the extreme heat is far from being over. All right, take a look at some of these heat alerts that we've got. Excessive heat warnings across much of Arizona, southern Nevada, even into the southern California deserts. Heat advisories just about everywhere else. These even extend out into west Texas and north Texas as well. So let's look at some of these temperatures. 118 was the high in Phoenix today. The 114 in Las Vegas forecast high in Tucson today was 112, 118 in Yuma and Palm Springs as well, and even hundreds in towards West Texas and New Mexico. Those temperatures will continue in towards tomorrow as well. And using the Climate Central Climate Shift Index, we can see how much more likely climate change is making these temperatures occur. And look at this. We see a lot of those three, fours, and a lot of the five on that index scale, which means climate change is making these temperatures at least three to five times more likely anywhere from a very strong climate change influence to an exceptional event driven by climate change and high pressure as it continues to sit over the southwest, building in over the west coast and even moving back. So even though California gets a break, northern California, especially Arizona, New Mexico, places like that do not. And over the next six to 10 days, that climate outlook shows where that high pressure will be with temperatures very likely warmer across much of the southwest and Great Plains. Today marks 54 years since the moon landing and NASA plans to go back. How much is going to cost us, the taxpayers? Before we go tonight, we're looking back to a point in time. Today marks 54 years since the moon landing and a lot has changed since then, since the moment that Neil Armstrong said those very famous words. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Very, very fine grain as you get close to it. Apollo 11 launched from the Kennedy Space Center on July 16th with three astronauts on board. Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin, and Commander Module Pilot Michael Collins. The mission lasted 195 hours, 18 minutes and 35 seconds. And by July 20th, a giant leap was made. As I recall, the picture was not very good. It was very snowy, and I think I can remember seeing movement in in the snow on the television and saying, there he is. A grainy video that changed the course of history and to capture those famous first steps. The Apollo Lunar Television Camera was mounted on the descent stage of the lunar module and pointed it out. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. More than 400,000 NASA employees helped launch the Apollo 11 mission. Companies like Aerojet, Rocketdyne, and Rancho Cordova were instrumental in getting us there. A lot of people don't know, you know, it's, it's kind of the, the quiet guy sitting out here building rocket engines. And if you're wondering, will Americans ever go back to the moon? Well, there are projects underway to get us there next year, but at the estimated cost of $28 billion, in taxpayer money. And this is what NASA is hoping to do. This mission is not just to set up on the moon, to step up on the moon, but to also stay there. And this is a concept from an artist back in 1995 that NASA has on their website. 
The reason why we haven't been back to the moon is because of politics and cash. Let us know what you want us to look into. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.